Well, we'll and, see what and happens. You've, you've provided an excellent analysis of it because I think they may have overplayed their hand a little bit. You know, according to one of the Republican leaders, he said by Clarissa and the other opponent going against Neil that they're going to drive out the Republican mm -hmm. vote in droves and it's a gubernatorial cycle and, you know, it's a big election. So they're confident they're going to come out. But, you know, all politics aside, mm -hmm. your vision and what you helped create over two decades up there and all the decades of your service, you know, how, in your opinion, can we keep our youth here? How can we keep our voter base? How can we keep our families here uh, for somebody aspiring to be county judge and, and other political leaders? How do, the, and all the young leaders, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean clearly, I mean, it starts with, number one, uh, trying to ensure that we provide them and give them the opportunity to get a good solid education as a foundation. And then coupled with that is that obviously the infrastructure outside the educational system has to be developed in order to ensure that we, we attract uh, the jobs and create the jobs that are needed now. We're on the, we're on the threshold whether we like it or don't like it. Obviously we have the, this Las Brisas project that is still being determined whether or not they're even going to get their air permit or not. Uh, and, 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 it's in the, and it's in the right arena. Obviously, there's the community is split whether or not Los Brisas should be here or not be here, but at the end of the day, it's the regulatory agency that's going to make that decision whether or not uh, they can fulfill their mission in terms of getting their air permit. Without that air permit, they ain't going anywhere. So that's step number one. We have the pipe facility, the Chinese that are building the pipe facility right, uh, right over there in, in, in uh, Gregory, uh, which also gonna create a couple of thousand jobs. Uh, so we have some things that have been driven by the Port of Corpus Christi, uh, whether it's wind energy uh, because of the influx of, of the wind energy being developed all over South Texas, in particular in, in now uh, in Nueces County, uh, that we're going to have some additional research development dollars are, gonna, are, are going to uh, broaden that uh, possibility. And so, again, I mean, it starts with getting a good solid foundation in education, but at the same time that the community leaders uh, create an atmosphere that is conducive to attracting businesses to Corpus Christi and that we give them every opportunity to flourish, that we attract and that we provide some incentive packages through abatements, whether it be at the county level, at the, at the junior college level and the city, uh, to serve as a catalyst right. uh, because we're in competition with every major city. Anytime a company wants to relocate, everybody puts different incentives on, on the table. Well, we've got to be able to stay competitive and to be able to do the same thing but how do we if do that? we're going to do that. How do we do that? Well, we, we do it by, by you know, ensuring and, and, and having people elected that understand the dynamics of why it's important to have people elected that understand those dynamics and to ensure that they don't all of a sudden decide, well, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna provide these incentives, and we're gonna, we're gonna say yes to this company, but no to that company. I think at the end of the day, we've got to be able to understand and, and look at what the bottom line and what it means and the type of quality jobs that, that we're talking about that are that are coming. I mean, uh, we have a very active governor's office uh, that has been active now for over 10 years, and also working with communities. So all of that, you know, has got to come together. But we've got to be able to make decisive decisions and not let things linger on like we have with the, with the Memorial Coliseum. I mean, we either, oh, we either, we either yeah, do something, almost. we either do something or we don't. I mean, so, but it looks like, you know, that deadline is coming close. Very and close. so in some form or another, something's gonna happen there. And, uh, but at least the city is exploring every possibility to make something good out of it. And if it doesn't, and at the end of the day, it gets leveled, it gets turned into a big park. Uh, the Memorial, the, the, it's a huge veterans park that gets developed there. And, and so nothing will ever be developed on that, on that shoreline, uh, and that's fine. I mean, there's still ample opportunity to build behind it, uh, and hopefully the investors uh, uh, will decide that, uh, that to, to still be able to come into Corpus Christi and develop that area. Uh, but we have a lot of good things going for us, but I mean, but at the same time, we've got to keep that momentum going, uh, and, and, and hopefully, and, and, and that starts with leadership. Well, and and uh, you it know, starts with leadership. But the reason the, I say that because we have, I mean, we have a fiasco right now with an appointment that has been made by the city of Corpus Christi uh, for a gentleman whose residency has been brought in question, and, and and it's a travesty that all of a sudden, out of all the thousands of people in Corpus Christi, we cannot find someone who has lived here. Uh, all their life or that somebody that wants to serve on that command is that we have to go out and try to come up with someone and try to get him qualified in order for him to, to be appointed yeah. and now we have a situation where the, the you know it, it's now been thrown into the judicial system 
uh, there's been there's there's been uh, they've gone to the courthouse to 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 ensure that this person is actually qualified, and now there's a possibility that the county judge may swear him in. Well, I, I think that's wrong. I mean, by from public policy, if there is now a there is going ongoing litigation, it is wrong for an entity to come in there and overstep. In my opinion, that's why you have separation of powers, to all of a sudden to have a, a county government decide, well, we don't care that you're in litigation and it's been, his residency has been raised and his, the question has been raised about residency. That's a contested issue. But we're going to, but it's a contested issue, but we you know what? We're still going to swear him in. And uh, I mean, I mean, what is the, what is the inherent problem or danger that, that with a hearing being scheduled for the 20th of January, and they're going to decide to go ahead and, and swear this individual in eight days before that hearing. And, and, and it's just, it, it just, it, it just it's doesn't, baffling. It, it's baffling. It doesn't speak well, I don't think, of, of, of county government uh, for them, because I can assure you that even at the legislative level, when they're, when, when I rem I'll never forget it, because we had the big contested case between Pennzoil and Texaco going at, at each other, and, uh, and they try to come to the legislature to, to try to seek a remedy, and the legislature, no. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't legislate to to, to fix uh, judicial problems. Y'all yeah, handle it in the court of law. That's what the is for. It's for, and so, and again, I mean, so that I mean, I find that a little disturbing that that, that there's a possibility that that the that the county judge may be swearing in an individual whose residency has been brought into question, not only brought into question, it's in the legal process. Let the process work itself. There's nothing that's going to be lost because it gets delayed for two or three weeks, but at least it clears it up once and for all, instead of having to go back and undo whatever this gentleman may or may not do once he gets seated. So it just, it, it just doesn't, it, it's bad public policy in my opinion, and, and hopefully the county judge will rethink uh, his position uh, regarding that issue. And uh, it's unfortunate that it's gotten to that point. I mean, it's totally gotten out of hand uh, regarding the appointment. I go back to, I mean, how difficult it, is it to find a resident of course, and, this, and these are the things that happen, the dissolution, well, true. the go. dissolution voters, because they see, you know, my vote doesn't help, my vote doesn't count, well, because, it's business, be done carefully. because it's business as usual. And so to the young voters who are out there that are listening or not, you can make the difference so that we elected people that do not make those kind of decisions. We elect people at the city level, at the county level, and at the state level that do not make ridiculous decisions, uh, that, that we cannot find somebody qualified in Corpus Christi to serve on the on the port of Corpus Christi, I mean on, on the on, on the port, I mean it's it's just a, it's a, it's a big tra travesty, uh, but we'll see what happens. But again, uh, uh, right now we'll just see how it all plays out. But right now it appears that that uh, the the county judges uh, may well be have already determined that he's gonna he's gonna swear him in. But we'll see.